Rust is a game all about surviving. There's a million ways to get into trouble, lose it all and end up back on the beach. And while the environment has its risks, by far the biggest threat to our lives is other players. We're often not just losing pixels either, we're losing time we've spent accumulating loot and that can be so gutting. So we'll take a look at a fairly wide range of topics, from base design and living location to dealing with other players and how to safely maximise resource farming. This isn't about being scared and hiding or having a boring wipe. This is about playing smart and staying off the radar of the 10 man zergs until we're ready to join that fight. Let's start out by looking at what type of base would be best. I'm a fan of small designs with big raid costs. I have some base design videos on builds that focus on exactly this, building standard looking 2x1s and 2x2s that also pack as much defense as possible. We all like showy bases that have a bunch of cool features, like shooting floors, compound walls and large furnaces. But these will simply attract more people to your home. They show wealth and while we plan to be rich, we don't want others to know it. In fact, we want those passing by to feel like we've got nothing to steal. With a basic design, we're hoping to blend in with any of the bases around us and give them no reason to choose our home as their target. The most common bases tend to be 2x1s or 2x2s, so these will work great. We can always expand our base later on. When it does come time to expand though, don't build too much too quickly. We don't want our neighbours to be surprised by our rapid growth and get unwanted attention that way. Let's now focus on base features. This is an often debated topic in my team, but I'm personally against using skin doors on the outside of a base, especially ones that glow. I still use front doors that have windows, but skin doors can show how long you've been playing the game, and that implied experience can give someone more than enough reason to assume you've got boxes filled with loot. And glowing doors, well, they simply make your base stand out. People can spend ages choosing a discrete base location, only to whack an orange door on their jump up that can be seen for miles. Again, it's only small, but if someone is passing by, we don't want our base to catch their attention at all. An unskinned door will make you look new, and a door with a key lock will make you look like a solo. So if you are playing alone, never use code locks, because if the enemy thinks you're alone, they know for sure it's only one person's loot, which is less appealing than the five man next door. Me and my teammates have even gone as far as to have the last person left online to change all the outside doors to key locks. Also, as a solo, I'll nearly always choose to run a generator inside my base, rather than have solar panels on my roof. Electric show progression and can single you out as a target. A lot of the time we see base designs that are tall and mighty. They're awesome and standing up high on your shooting floor can make you feel untouchable. But if surviving the wipe a little longer is your goal, then plan your base height. The taller your base gets, the more people will see it. I recommend small but girthy base designs and if you can, expand outwards rather than upwards. Add second floors to prevent top down raids, but if a spare room to store your old tier 2 is needed, find a way to add this on ground level. Keep your base hidden below the tree lines and keep it off the horizon. With all that said, if we're really trying to cut down the risk as much as possible, then I'd recommend you build multiple small bases across the map. Although not the funnest way to live, at least for me, the multi-base meta just can't be ignored. When it comes to where to live, there's no hard and fast solution. Every map, wipe and neighbourhood is different. And this isn't about living on an iceberg, in a cave or a desert base far away. We still want to have some freedom over our wipes, just simply survive a little longer. You can still live by monuments, but common sense suggests that parts of the map between two or more of them are not only going to be the most populated areas, but more importantly, these will be some of the most travelled routes with the heaviest foot traffic. These beaten paths will have a lot more drama than we're looking for. So be aware of these routes and consider living on an outside edge to a monument where people won't be going to and from their base. If you do see a base where you want to build, think are they going to need to come your way during the wipe? Is there a resource or a monument nearby? If there is, try to change your build spot in a way that won't also keep you running through this area. Again, it's not really about where their bases are, but more where they'll be running about. A simple adjustment like moving your base up a cliff face as too much effort to climb can keep lazy players from ever coming close. If I was to recommend some places where not to live, these would be parts of the map where the most temporary players are. By temporary, I mean all the players that we see coming and going quickly. Those getting trapped in the chaos, fights over single trees, door camping one another, roof camping and satchel raiding on day one. I love getting involved in that as much as the next guy, but if we're here looking to survive, then places near spawn beaches or living right by bandit or outposts are not going to help us. Rivers and swamps are also a no-go for me. They're a different kind of hostile where everyone's living in wooden bases, spearing each other and not really getting anything done. Fun, but not adding to our life expectancy. In terms of what I would recommend, I follow a simple process when I log into a wipe. I have a few tier 1 and 2 monuments in mind, and then I'll look at the map and try to find a spot around that monument that's off the beaten track. Initially, I'll ignore the desert and the snow, and I'll try to find one of my monuments that isn't directly in the centre of the map, or too close to the edge either. 
I also don't want to pick a spot that's right next to a spawn beach. So without knowing where they all are, I'll simply try and get as far away from where I currently am. Once I've got a couple of spots in mind, I'll take a look around them and try to find an area that's off the beaten path for each of them, but it still has to give me enough directions to farm in. I personally love those patches of the woodlands that are on a hill. They tend to have small cliffs and tree lines that you can often build a two-story 2x2 two two and still not be visible to anyone on the main route. When you've found your spot, make sure you quickly learn the safest path to your front door. Cliffs you know you can climb or hills with slopes that you know you can hide behind can all work well to reduce the number of times that you're seen right outside your base. We're not only avoiding fights near our base, but if we get spotted too much in one spot, the chances of people hanging around will only increase. In general, keeping your visibility down by travelling efficiently is a huge part of staying alive. You can start by making sure you're always travelling in the right direction. I always use the in-game map markers. I'll mark exactly where I'm going or a specific checkpoint that takes me on the safest route and I'll constantly make sure I'm sticking to it. It's easy to get distracted and end up way off course and now at risk. Horses can also make your life so much easier. A well-fed stallion with shoes on will not only open up further way monuments to you and help you live in remote parts of the map, but it's also hard to fight an enemy that's hurtling past on a horse. I'll use a horse a lot, especially on my first day. Instead of aggroing my neighbours, I'll travel a grid or two away just to do some stone or wood farming. Worth mentioning though, don't leave your horse outside your base. This will have the opposite effect of what we're going for and will likely make other players aware that you're active and online. A horse left outside is an open invite to door campers, so either leave the horse safely away from your base or build a stable nearby. Let's talk about dealing with neighbours. I enjoy arguing and banter with those outside the base as much as anybody, but this is so high up on the list of things that will get you raided or door camped. I'm not suggesting you take abuse from the trio living in a poop farm, but before you know it they'd have spent the night farming up enough sulphur to foundation wipe you. If someone knows where you live, you should ideally do what you can to avoid conflict. If you are followed back to your base and they say something from outside, consider just saying nothing at all. I'll often crouch around my base and take time to sort my boxes. It's far more boring for those outside if you don't talk and give them a reason to stick around. If an argument does happen, the best thing to do is keep distance from that group when you're out and about. It's well worth going an extra grid further away, otherwise that person you just insulted will keep rocking up to every tree you farm. You also don't want to become a source of kits to any group. If I know a group is on the lookout for me, I'll continue my chores but undergear myself. Lowering a group's expectation of the loot they may find on me can help them move on. I'd even recommend trying to make friends with those who live around you. Yeah, you could take some kits off them and you could slow them down, but they could slow you down too. But if it does work out well, you could have backup when there's trouble at your base, or simply farm in peace knowing those that can hear you aren't heading over. I've avoided roof campers, door campers and offline raiders who left me well alone because I was briefly nice to them four days ago. Let's say they don't want to be friends though. They know where you live and they're on the lookout for you whenever you leave home. Firstly, just play smart. Don't get spotted leaving your base too often and don't give them any reason to check out what you're up to. Don't do things like use torches in your base or campfires at night, crouch inside when you can and don't begin some huge build project when you know they're just going to come over. If they still keep coming, you can start building structures and placing walls that cut off any line of sight to your base or the paths you use. Being able to leave your home without being spotted should become a priority or you could have a whole run stolen when you get home. Okay, so we're staying alive, we've got a base down and we're getting along with our neighbours. It's time to focus on farming and that comes with a lot more danger. First and foremost, it kind of starts inside your base with a bit of a balancing act. Don't be wasteful. Make your resources stretch as far as possible. Trips out of the base need to be efficient and the more trips we go on, the more chance of getting into trouble. On your trips out, you're going to want to reduce the time that you're out in the open making noise. Always make sure you're using the best tool for the job. The moment you can make a stone or metal tool, do so. If you find a jackie or chainsaw, don't be scared of losing it, put it to use. By using the fastest tool available, you can dramatically reduce the time spent farming and waiting for enemies to show up. Also make sure you're doing the trick of waiting to knock down all your trees in one go. This can be a lifesaver. When farming scrap, a lot of the time less is more. Keep your run short and try to get as much as you can without hanging about too long. The key is to keep on the move and never give someone long enough to sneak up on you. It's far better to get back with two rows of farm than it is to lose an inventory full. While not as exciting as a monument run, on a full server a brown road with only a handful of crate spawns can be an absolute game changer. Rarely contested, it's possible to have sole ownership of these crates, some of which can respawn so fast due to the high pop. 
Combine that constant flow of scrap with tech trees and you can grind up the workbenches in peace. Horse, cloth and fish farms are also worth a mention here, but as you can imagine, running any farming operation will quickly put a target on your back. If you want to go to monuments, that's fine, but let's be smart about those runs too. One method I rely on every single wipe is looting monuments for their crates without using carts. Monuments like power plant and water treatment have so many crates, often with a good number of them like the tunnel ones, left unlooted. By knowing a sheltered and streamlined way to run around these monuments, you'll waste no time and limit your chance of being seen. You can also use this car tree run as a safe way to check if the puzzle crates are even there, and then come back shortly after if they are, halving the time spent per run and the risk. If you want to learn these routes, I have a handful of videos where I take you around some of the most popular monuments. If your monument is contested, this can be the time when it feels most hopeless, but this is when you've got to have backup plans in mind, and understand your own map well enough to know where to go instead. Maybe now it's time to find or buy a horse and take some less risky but much longer trips to other parts of the map. I hate roaming at night. It never goes well for me and I can never see a thing. However, I do like to try and be the first one out of my base. Just when the sun's coming up, it can seem much darker indoors than it actually is outside. It's possible to get an entire monument run done before most of the population even know it's the next day. I also do a similar thing for when I actually get onto the server getting on a couple of hours before the main bulk of players do, just so I can get some farming out of the way. Try to have some time in your session dip into the quiet hours. Then use this time to do productive tasks and get kits ready to join in the fight when everyone's on. Most importantly, always keep yourself moving forward. There's a million ways that other players will impact your wipe and make your plans feel impossible. If the local Chad and his 10 teammates are living next to your monument, then you can't get hung up or waste days trying to get a tiny amount of loot. It's rust, there's always other stuff to do. Organise your boxes or build out parts of your base. Go fishing in a safe zone or gamble at bandit camp. Just go build another base entirely that you can have as a backup. You're here to play Rust and make progress, so don't let one failed objective hold you back from moving your wipe along. Hopefully some of this advice can help your wipes last a little longer or make your wipes a little less stressful. If you have any other tips that help you survive, let me and the others know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, subscribe if you're not already, and I'll catch you in a bit.